Let's talk about Diageo, which is much more close to home, I suppose you could say. Diageo PLC formed from the combination of some storied liquor brands. The name came up in 1997. Yes, from the merger of Guinness and Grand Metropolitan. So the brands will just knock you away. I can go through them here, but I won't right now. Market capitalization of this one is just shy of $72 billion, which if you work backwards is about 58.4 billion pounds. Price earnings ratio 24.19, dividend yield 2.6. Do you want to have a go at listing some of their brands? I mean, Johnny Walker. Johnny Walker is the one that, that springs to mind. And as we were saying earlier, you know, there's a huge number of, of brands within yep. that. Um, and you know, <laughs> it's it's it covers the entire demographic spectrum. Well, you're talking about incredible. whiskey, also J and B, Bell's, Lagavulin, Seagram's. Yeah, that's just the whiskey brands. That's right. Then you're talking Smirnoff vodka. Exactly. Probably Thank the you biggest, very much. Uh, uh, vodka brand in the world. And gin. You're gin Tanqueray. Tanqueray and Gordon's. Yep. Rum, uh, rum, Captain Morgan, right, yep, and okay. Bundaberg. Yep, I've got the benefit of notes here. You ah, think? right, okay. <laughs> Bundaberg, that's an Australian thing. Tequila, yeah. Um, so Don yeah. Julio, tequila. Yeah, I mean, they cover every single Bailey's possible. Bailey's liqueur. It, it's uh, imaginable. And uh, I haven't even uh, started yeah. on the beers. Yeah, Guinness. Guinness. I mean, Guinness. They sell a lot of Guinness. They sell a lot of Guinness in Nigeria too, apparently. And there you've got to be careful. Coming back to the comments I made earlier. I mean, that Nigerian market has collapsed. It mm. really has collapsed. The economy is, is in deep, deep trouble. Mm. So obviously, and you know, they've been brewing Guinness there since the 1970s. They, they, interesting enough, they use a, a variant of sorghum for it rather than roasted barley. Okay, as and the uh, uh, protein input or the yeah. uh, carbohydrate input. Yeah. I just want to point out one more thing about them is that they own 34% of Moore and Hennessy. So remember I was talking about LVMH before. For historic reasons to do with the brands, Diageo put its 34% stake in Moore & Hennessy into a non-managed entity. So that entity is managed by LVMH, but that kicks in a lot of additional yeah. revenue from the champagne and cognac and brandies business that LVMH owns. Okay, let's have a look at the share chart. We were hot on it last time, and I'm pleased because if you look at it, it had a nice surge. It's trading basically at its all-time high right now. I guess part of that, though, is the weakening pound meaning that its global earnings are reporting in pounds Bands, and look yeah, stronger. Yeah. yeah, no, you're right. And, and that's going to be a feature of a lot of companies, you know, that are based in, in London. And, uh, and if the pound is, is likely to continue weakening, which I think it is, mm. then it's going to give an added boost to the stock. But just generally, it seems that even in the economy that we live in, which is, you know, always mixed, there are always regions doing well and others not doing so well. This kind of product and these kinds of brands seem well set to continue yeah. to enjoy. This is huge quality earnings. and it's, it's such a clever way that they've, they've, they've mapped out the world. It's beautiful. Okay, so hot on that. Oh, definitely. Yes, good. Right.